Hey theme park hipsters, what's up? This is Nikki J and I'm here to help you plan the best solo theme park vacation. Today we are in the beautiful Epcot theme park and I am here by myself doing it big and just relaxing and taking in this wonderful crisp January weather. But before I, you know, get into what I have to go through, I want to make sure that you grab your free Disney guide. You can get that here in the links of this video. Now, if you are thinking about going to Walt Disney World solo, first you want to make sure that you plan ahead. Nothing is worse than getting here and trying to figure out what you want to do. I'm giving you this tip because sometimes I know that I have been doing a solo thing for a while, but when you're new, you're kind of like, what is it? What is there for me to do? Where do I start? And having a plan kind of gives you some type of way, some type of starting point. And that leads me to my next point. Have a fast pass book. If you're coming to a theme park like Epcot, you're going to want to have a fast pass book. Now, my must do attractions here in Epcot are Living with the Land, of course, but you don't really need a fast pass for that one. Frozen Ever After, and you definitely have to do Test Track. There are some exciting rides coming out in the future, but for now, definitely get that Test Track Fast Pass. The next thing that you want to do is possibly theme your day here at Disney. So maybe instead of just doing all the thrill rides, it might be a day of just enjoying all the different cocktails and beverages out here or just making your own food and wine festival tour around Epcot. That is one of the best ways to do Disney. And when you're solo and you kind of come to Disney a lot with family, you want to try to spice up your trip to make it something remarkable. The next thing I recommend is that if you are making this into a big trip, a solo Disney trip, that you pick a lively hotel. You want to choose one that can have you interact and socialize maybe in the lounge area, but be sure when you're there to have an open posture because the last thing you want to do is give off a don't come and talk to me vibe and that can be done easily if you're just looking down at your phone. And don't be afraid to socialize when you're at the parks. I know that is something that you're probably not trying to do, but socializing doesn't have to be with a complete stranger. Talk to a cast member, kind of explain what kind of trip you're having. You never know what kind of things may perk their ear and what kind of gifts they may give you for being so brave and going to Walt Disney World by yourself. Another tip to know is that you are at Disney. So do it your way. Do whatever you feel like doing within legal bounds. Of course, I always say that because you're not going to get me responsible. But you want to make sure that you plan your day. If you want to see Beauty and the Beast show over and over or go over to Ariel and just watch all her friends do their aquatic show, then you get to do it because this is your day. This is your time to do whatever you want on your solo theme park vacation. And while you are here on your solo trip, remember to take lots of photos. You need to get your selfies, you know, I'm in selfie mode right now on my phone, but definitely take lots of photos to remember this amazing trip that you decided to do on your own. And don't forget, when you're at Walt Disney World, you're never truly alone. The cast members, everyone here, they're all your friends, they're your family, one big family reunion, so you never have to worry about being alone. And if this is still kind of iffy and you feel intimidated about going to Disney solo, maybe get to Epcot or Hollywood Studios an hour or two before your family gets there just to kind of test the waters to see if you even like solo travels. Those are my tips for doing Walt Disney solo. You know I like to keep it concise and informative for you. If you have any other questions feel free to hit me up over at ThemeParkHipster.com.